Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Sarah Martin with The Contoured Chemist. We're talking skincare today. Can you tell? I'm coming at you barefaced in all my glory and we're gonna be going back to the basics. Um, I have a lot of skincare videos and I know you guys are always coming to me asking for help in building your regimen. So this is gonna be specifically for you if you don't know where to start, we're gonna be talking about the basics of a skincare regimen, how to choose skincare, how to layer it, what to avoid with what, um, so you can get started on building your perfect routine. So if you wanna check it out, please keep watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for being here. All right, friends, I almost just clipped my hair back because I'm so used to doing that in every makeup tutorial, but that's okay. We're not doing makeup today. We're talking skin and I didn't put any makeup on because I want you guys to see how far my skin has come. Um, I still have a lot of concerns. I feel like you always will as we age, right? We're always going to have new concerns that arise, but I wanted to kind of chat about how to choose your skincare and just start from the very basic beginning. Now know that there are professionals who will build your regimen if you tell them exactly what you want and you don't have to figure it out yourself. Usually it is medical grade skincare, so you will, there will be a different kind of price point versus what I will be ch chatting about today. So know that, but this is what I've learned over the years with my background as a chemist and my background in the beauty industry. So I hope it can help you get started if you are looking to build your regimen more on a budget. Because I know when I first started, it's overwhelming. There's so many products and skincare is expensive. So kind of knowing where you should put your money and where you can kind of get away with more of a budget item um, can sometimes be super helpful. So let's just start with the very basics. How do you choose your skincare? Okay, I'm gonna break it down step by step. All right, the first thing you wanna do is pick your skin concerns. So I feel like so many people come to me and they're like, well, I want anti-aging, hyperpigmentation, I have redness, I have uh, fine lines, I have like they dryness, like they just all these things, right? And that's not saying that you don't have, like I literally have hyperpigmentation, I do have redness, anti-aging, of course. Um, I like that luminosity to my skin, all of those things um, will be dependent on which products I'm using. And I'm not gonna say like, don't just like get it all at once. Like it sometimes is beneficial to start with maybe one or two concerns, start there. Or look at your concerns and try to pick ones that um, will target more than one of your concerns. This is why you guys see me use niacinamide so much. It's like the one thing that will help your skin's barrier function, meaning it'll improve your dryness and hydration. It helps hyperpigmentation. It helps lines. I mean, it helps redness. It helps acne. That's why I talk about it so much because it's one of those few products that will do it all, kind of like retinols. So I won't get into that. I'm not going to get into specifics. I'm going to show you guys some of them, but I'm going to do a part two where I'm going to talk about my favorites from each so that you have an idea of kind of where to start. So be on the lookout for that one. That'll be next, but it's too much for one video. This one is just gonna be very basic. Okay, so from the chart, pick your top concerns, right? And then I want you to do your research, okay? I know you've already planning on doing research if you're watching this video, um, so you're totally good, but reviews are super important. Make sure you're looking at the claims from the company itself and taking it with a grain of salt. Like, 
of course they're gonna say it's the best and it's, it's clean and all those kind of things. But know that they are marketing, they are not necessarily going to tell you the nitty gritty truth, like real consumers will that have tried the product and that might have similar concerns as you. So what we're looking for is like this magic bubble of affordable, effective, and safe, right? I don't use the word clean because that's not a regulated term. So be leery of the the clean kind Mark. of getting strategy that is like taken over the skincare world. Clean is not, it's not regulated. You can't actually, I won't go on a soapbox, but you can't actually believe those claims. It's not a regulated term. So we're looking for safe ingredients. Um, so if you do have concerns about ingredients, make sure you are checking labels, especially if you have um, any kind of allergies or something like that. So we're going to look at ingredients. We're going to look at the claims and do your research, look at reviews. And is it good for your skin type? Okay. Make sure what you're choosing is actually good for your specific skin type. Okay. So once we've done our research on that particular thing and it's within our budget, because that's always important. There are some things that might be amazing, but if they're way too costly to be able to repurchase every single month as you go through that item, it's not worth it. Um, so always kind of take that into account. That's the affordable. I love me some affordable skincare that actually works. So good. Then you have to try it. So not, I, I feel like I preach this all the time, but not all skincare is created equal because our skin is all so different. So what might work for me in certain areas of my face might not work for you because it is so dependent on your skin. So um, you gotta try it and you got to be reasonable about the time frame you're giving your skin to adjust to it or to show results. I feel like this is my biggest problem because I am into that instant gratification. I want like that instantaneous results and that's just not feasible when it comes to skincare. It takes a long time, unfortunately. So for example, hyaluronic acids, okay? I'm sure you've heard of them. They are amazing for hydration. They are hydrators. So to actually see skin hydration, 15 minutes, right? They're immediate. I love them. They're gonna hydrate your skin. But over time, it will help plump up fine lines and wrinkles but you're not gonna see that for at least eight weeks of using it consistently every single day, um, maybe even twice a day, okay? So know that there is a big difference in every um, ingredient and then also the skin concern of that ingredient. Retinol, I feel like retinol is probably the number one thing that I talk about being very patient with. For one, because you have to build up your tolerance and so you have to slowly introduce it to your into your regimen anyway. Retinol is also one of those superstar ingredients that has been proven to work on a wide range of skincare concerns. So acne. Acne can be anywhere from four to 12 weeks where you'll start seeing an improvement. And that's because everyone's skin now, is different. On fine lines and wrinkles, it can be anywhere from 12 to 24 weeks. Um, I literally tell people, six months um, before you're really gonna notice a difference, depending on how long it took you to fully introduce it into your regimen because it can cause such sensitivity. I always recommend using it like once a week for a month, then twice a week, and then and just keeping like for a month and then keeping upping that dosage until you get to higher percentages. And also if you start with a super low percentage, say you start with a serum and not even this is prescription strength, um, you gotta go through that first and then you can maybe get up to a prescription strength, low dosage, and then you can go to the next percentage. It can take some time. So be very patient with retinol. Um, hyperpigmentation, they say, is 24 weeks. So um, I feel like I'm still working on getting up to the dosage. I need to really see results from that one. Okay, so that's a little bit about how to choose skincare. So make sure you are looking at your targeted concerns and Do then your research before you invest in something and then you gotta give it enough time to make sure it's working before you switch it up, right. okay? So my number one question I'm always asked is like basic 
regimen. You guys have probably seen some of the regimens I do. This is after years of experimenting with products and introducing new products into my routine. That is not at all the way I started, okay? I'm gonna tell you, the way I started was simply washing my face with the milk cleanser and then doing the cream at night. That is literally all I did for six months because before I had never been able to stick to an actual skincare routine. I was one of those horrible people that slept in their makeup and I could, and I just never could follow through. Um, this made it simple. You were like introducing a habit. It takes some time, right? Keeping it simple is the best way to be consistent. So that's how I started. That is what completely normalized my skin. I went from combo skin to normal and then I was hooked. And then I was like, well, shoot, I look a lot younger now that my skin's taken care of. Let's see what else I can do. Let's see how quickly I can reverse time. And so then I started incorporating actives and all these other amazing things into my routine, but these have always remained my core staple. Okay, so let's just start off with basic morning skincare, AM routine. Okay, first of all, cleanse, okay? Now, um, there's. I feel like it's very debatable whether you have to do like a full cleanse with something like a full cleanser or um, makeup wipes. I feel like makeup wipes get a horrible rep. And that's because if you use these with nothing else, like not as part of a double cleanse, but you're just using this to clean your skin, it doesn't, it doesn't work well. This can't actually remove all of it. Now you guys will see me, I use it all the time to take off my makeup before I clean my skin. I also like to use this in the morning to just remove any like leftover oils um, or moisturizer and to get anything that is maybe like seeped out of my pores overnight and to get, you know, if I've taken good care of my skin at night, it's clean. I just have residual oils or cream from my last steps of my nightly routine. So I will use this in the morning and I'm good to go because it's very gentle on my skin and it's not going to strip it. So whatever works for your skin, cleanse in the morning. Okay. You've got to at least get off whatever, like I said, seeped out of your pores overnight residual uh, skincare that might have not all absorbed into your skin overnight because it's not going to all completely absorb. Um, you got to get like that fresh, clean skin to start in the morning. Okay, so number two. This is my highly recommended. I don't start a morning routine after cleansing with anything other than a vitamin C serum. Now, this can be any antioxidant. So look for an antioxidant serum for your targeted concerns. Okay. So, um, I'll talk more about vitamin C in my favorites video. It's my favorite antioxidant because I want that glow to my skin. It is one of the best antioxidants that you can use on your skin. It is, it's made a huge difference for me after your antioxidant serum and eye cream, optional, but if you are aging like me, you know it's necessary so that you have hydration around your eyes and that way you'll get more, a smoother finish with your makeup. And then moisturize and SPF. So I'll be honest, I don't put a moisturizer on. My skin is completely normalized. I use my SPF as my moisturizer. So I love this one because it is moisturizing enough for me and it's got some great other skincare benefits like niacinamide, but um, and I know I get asked all the time about a good one for underneath the 3D foundation, and I love this silicone-free priming moisturizer. So if you are dry, I like, or in winter, if I'm feeling a little bit more dry than normal, I will use this and then I will top it with this. But SPF is always last and don't skip it in the morning, especially if you're using things in your skincare that's going to make your skin more photosensitive, like sensitive to sunlight, like vitamin C works really well with an SPF. Um, retinols are gonna make you more photosensitive. 
uh, glycolic acid, things like that. So that's why I say keep those more photosensitive things to nighttime. That's why you normally see those at night. That way you won't be as sensitive to sunlight. Okay, so don't skip the SPF. Take it from somebody who has had melanoma. It stinks. Wear your SPF, all right? I'll get off my soapbox. All right, so I feel like nighttime is where, like I'm always in a rush in the morning. My skincare has to be super simple in the morning. That can take me two seconds, like, like, right? But nighttime is where I kind of take that time to really decompress and I enjoy my nighttime regimen now. I could never say that before. <laughs> it was more of a chore and now I actually enjoy it and um, I look forward to taking my makeup off at night. But if you don't, if you're not there yet, um, start with the very basics. Okay, like I said before, if you're wearing makeup, double cleanse. I can't even tell you the difference that made for me um, and my skin, especially if you're acne prone, use two. Okay, so I either remove my makeup with the white or I love melting it off with a balm. Okay, so some kind of cleansing balm will literally make your makeup melt off. I love this one because it's got um, enzymes in it, so it will really like exfoliate at the same time. I won't get into that right now, but use a balm as your first step, takes off the makeup. Then you can go in with your cleanser to clean the skin, okay? So we're removing makeup, then we're cleaning the skin. If you do it in one step, you will be more prone to missing makeup and you could break out more. Now, um, you can then add a toner, if you will, some toners, which I don't even have one are right here that is good for, but some toners are made to remove um, any makeup you missed. So if you don't double cleanse, I would recommend using some kind of toner that does right. that. So after your double cleanse, now I want you to use an exfoliant. Now this isn't something that has to be done daily. Um, it depends on kind of which ones you prefer. I love to use more than one in different parts of my regimen, but I will say one of them that's really affordable that a lot of people like um, is a glycolic acid. AHAs and BHAs are amazing chemical exfoliants. So as we age, oh my gosh, literally every 10 years, your skin cell turnover slows down by like 10 to 15 days. Okay, so that means all of that buildup of dead skin um, that makes you look more dull and drier and pretty much older. It really truly does. So in order to increase that skin cell turnover, you've got to use some kind of exfoliant. And my favorite is an acid. Um, AHAs and BHAs are amazing if you want your skin to get um, brightened to kind of remove that dullness. Literally anything that increases skin cell turnover will make you look younger. That's why retinols are so good. And that's why AHAs and BHAs are so good. So this one I really do love. This is technically a toning solution. So toner, but it's also an exfoliant. Now I don't necessarily recommend using an exfoliant every single night. Um, unless you have more oily skin, I can't use this every night. It's too much for my normal skin. You can slowly introduce it and this is amazing. Um, or you can skip the toner and use more of a, I don't think I brought one with me, but an exfoliating serum, okay? And those are the same premise. It's got those AHAs and BHAs and it's gonna increase that skin cell turnover. Okay, so I say every two to three days, you guys know me, I am a ride or die cure girl. I use this um, after you cleanse. This is a great exfoliant as well. That's really gentle, not acids, but it will exfoliate the skin unlike any other. It's, I'm, it's definitely my holy grail exfoliator. And once you have all that dead skin off, you can use a targeted serum for your concern, right? Whatever your targeted top concern is, pick a serum, okay? So this is where I say you don't necessarily have to pick all the skincare concerns. Now you can start with one serum and kind of build and use multiple. I know I like to use multiple serums. Serums are my favorite. Um, serums really penetrate the skin deeper and that's where you get a lot of those results. So 
Oh my gosh, I have everything from copper peptides to just a peptide with hyaluronic in it. Um, there's some for straight hyperpigmentation, niacinamide's considered a serum. So anything like this and this kind of general thing is gonna be your targeted serums. These are where, look at that chart and kind of look for the ingredient that you think will be best for your concern and you wanna use it at this point in your regimen. At and night. after that, retinols and moisturizer. I mean, I will preach retinols till I'm blue in the face. It's the only skincare that has had enough science-backed research where the, it is proven to do all the things it says. <laughs> like there's not a whole lot other, this is why you hear it talked about so much. There are so many different percentages and products and things out there. Just start with one, okay? And I'll go over that more in my face. I also have a video called the ABCs of skincare where I talk more about retinols and why it's so important and some good options to start with. Okay, so retinols, moisturizer. So at night is when I say get a good good heavy duty nighttime moisturizer that's going to hydrate your skin overnight. Um, that's gonna add that glow and luminosity overnight. If your night moisturizer is not doing that, get you a better night moisturizer. So our milk cream does have retinols in it. It's not so strong that you can't use a retinol with it. I do get that question a lot. Um, this is the first thing that I ever feel like really made a noticeable difference in my skin just by implementing this only. Um, when I first started, this was the only thing we had in our skincare line and it made the biggest difference. I like to attribute this to starting my skincare junkie lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that is literally it. Double cleanse, use an exfoliant if it's your night to exfoliate, then use a targeted serum, finish it with a retinol, and your moisturizer and that's it guys that is a simple nighttime routine that's not going to take you a whole lot of time but that's going to get you results really quickly because you can stick to it and be consistent at it Now that we've talked about choosing our skincare and what we need in our routine, let's talk about a little bit about how to actually apply those to the skin. My number one question is what you can use with what, how to layer them into a full regimen. So um, I think we can all establish, we understand cleansing is always gonna be your first step. Remove your makeup, cleanse the skin, and then your your skin is your canvas, right? You are ready the to next go. Next two steps, I feel like I switch back and forth a little bit depending on the day and what I'm using. So the specific type. So if I am using, I didn't even bring my toner. So I there is a toner for our Tres Leches. If I'm using that toner, I just simply spray it on. Good, I'm done, I'm cleansed, I'm toned. If you um, like to use an essence, you can use that in place of a toner. So essences are a little bit different. Um, toners are usually um, either specifically made to exfoliate, like if you see anything that has the word glow, like glow tonic, glow toner, something like that, that means they have AHAs and BHAs in them. So make sure you're reading labels okay make sure you know what ingredients are in um, because it makes a huge difference on where you put it in your skincare lineup or how often you use it so our toner that we have is as more of like a getting off the last bit of makeup it kind of is soothing it is really good for like sunburns and it has witch hazel in it so that kind of toner really can be used as often as you want it doesn't have more targeted actives like this, okay? This is an exfoliating toner, very different, okay? This is meant to increase your skin cell turnover. Now, essences can be very different as well. And 
technically, this one's like really gel-like. This one's a little bit thicker. I have another one, but these kind of balance the skin and they usually have more like good for you skincare ingredients, more so than a toner. Like this one is moisturizing and anti-aging because it has snail serum in it. Yes, but it's really good for the skin. So you can kind of decide which is your best bet based on your skin type and your targeted concern. If you want to keep it basic, I would suggest if you're not double cleansing, get one that will remove excess makeup. If you are double cleansing, I would say try something like this to use as your exfoliant and your toner in one. If you want to switch it up each day, you can use that on one night, use this the next night, alternate because you can't use this with a retinol and I'll get into that in a second. So on retinol nights, switch it out with something like this, okay? That I kind of flip flop before, like back and forth between toner and exfoliant because if I'm using this, it's my toner and my exfoliant. But um, if I'm actually gonna exfoliate my skin, I clean it, then I use an actual exfoliant and I feel like this takes off a toner. To me, it doesn't make sense to tone or put this down and then exfoliate it right back off. So <laughs> I will cleanse, I will exfoliate the skin so I know I have a really clean canvas with no dead skin, and then I will use this, okay? I'm not gonna use this because they're both exfoliators. So that's another question I get all the time, like when to use both, don't use them together, okay? There's no point to ever using two exfoliants during the same time in your regimen. There's no need. You just exfoliate the skin. Don't oversensitize it by exfoliating again. That's why it's so important that you know that this is an exfoliant, not just a toner, okay? So don't use two exfoliants together. There's just no need. Now, if you exfoliate in the morning with this, you can use this at night. It's totally okay if your skin needs it. I like to also harp on only doing what your skin really needs and making sure you're paying attention to your skin and you'll notice more and more that your skin changes day to day. You might be feeling dry one day, so guess what? Switch out your normal active for something that's gonna add hydration. Um, if you notice your skin is more flaking, exfoliate. Um, really make sure you're getting that skin cell turnover to amp up. And so you can constantly be adjusting this as you need it. Um, this is why having a few different options can really help once you grow your regimen and you kind of know the basics and know what you're doing. So we're gonna cleanse and then we're gonna either exfoliate or we're gonna tone, or we're gonna use something that does both. And then we're going in with our serum, okay? So when you're layering, think texture. We're always going from, after we cleanse, of course, to the most liquid, okay? Think of the thinnest to the thickest consistency. Like this is a cream, a heavy cream, okay? Oils are heavier, okay? Think most water-like to the thickest, thick moisturizing like night creams are gonna be last. So if you go in that order, more than likely you are gonna be golden. So look at texture and then kind of go in this basic order. So after exfoliant, we do our serums, okay? Serums are thinner than moisturizers, okay? So we do whatever our targeted serum is, then we do our moisturizer. Now, here's where I get a lot of questions as well, is what do you do if you are using an oil? And I know I love using oils in my skincare, so I talk about them a lot. So. Um, I know I have people buy them and then they're like, when do I use it? Um, these two can be interchangeable. Um, I say do it based on your preference. So um, the milk cream, our cream is super heavy and thick. Well, I feel like it doesn't fully absorb if I put an oil on first. But I like the fact that if I put on my cream and then I put on my oil over it, I feel like this 
is so dense that it holds the moisture, it holds the cream and it locks it down and it lets it absorb. So when you're thinking about um, order of products and layering, it just kind of makes logical sense. You go thinnest to thickest because you want whatever you put down first to fully absorb. If you were to put down this heavy moisturizer first and then tried to put a serum on top, it's too thick for this serum to ever penetrate my skin. Okay, so the same kind of logic goes with oil and moisturizers. It kind of can be based on the moisturizer you're using and the oil you're using. So test it and see which one you prefer. I've done both, but I tend to put this on first and then this to lock it in. I will wake up and I will still have excess oil on my face, which is why I clean in the morning, um, because I know that this holds in all of this moisturizer that it has a little bit that can't absorb, and that's fine, but I'd rather this penetrate the skin because this has got retinols and all kinds of good Just kind of helps it move on its way. And then if you're in the morning, SPF is always last, okay? You always want that as a barrier on the very top, okay? Whether it's a chemical or it's a physical sunscreen, you always want that on very last. And I don't usually recommend using oils except at night. Um, if you are aware of 3D foundation, um, you don't need it with our, um, we have occlusive creams. So you really do not need an oil under your makeup. So the other thing can be um, for layering. So if you follow the general cleanse, tone, exfoliant, serum, moisturizer, oil, and sunscreen, okay? Thinnest to thickest. And then pH level also depends. Now, most skincare products are formulated, so there's a lot more leeway, I would say, but um, that is also kind of why they're the consistency that they are is all to due to the pH and allowing our skin to kind of absorb it, absorb it and going from lowest to highest pH versus our skin. So if you don't know, our skin is at seven. It's like right in the middle of the scale as far as pH. But if you want to go from the most acidic um, first, which is the lower number. So this, I love this because it literally says right on the bottle, pH 3.6. Okay. So AHAs and BHAs are the most acidic. Obviously it's an acid, right? We kind of probably got that. And then vitamin C, where's my vitamin C? Okay. Those are all in between 2.5 to 4 okay so if you're using that that's why we like to use that early on in that um morning regimen okay right after we cleanse we use the vitamin c if that is your antioxidant because it's got a low ph then you can go into retinols niacinamide hyaluronic acids and copper peptides those just as general all of um all of those Okay, depending on if you're day or night, are in that middle like 4.5 to 7 range right below our skin's pH. So those can all go on after those acids. So that's, that kind of explains a little bit more of why we do acid serum. So if you do have um, not just a toner exfoliant, but an, and I didn't grab one, um, like I have a couple that are low serums, those are all ones that have an exfoliator in them. You wanna use those before you would use niacinamides or retinols or things like that according to pH. So if it's an acid, use it first. Okay, last and finally, what not to mix. I like to keep it super straightforward, okay? Um, acids, retinols, okay? Both of these are going to sensitize your skin. Um, as you know, you have to build up a tolerance to actually both of these. Don't ever do them together. So what that can cause is possible irritation. Now I'm not saying everyone's skin would be irritated, but you better believe if you've never used either of those before and you put them together, your face is gonna turn bright red and it's probably gonna hurt. You don't want to cause any inflammation to the skin. 
um, that's what causes problems. So it can cause dryness, peeling, redness, and some things just straight up react with each other and cause them to be inactive. Okay. So then you're wasting your money and you don't even realize that you're putting them on your face at the same time and they're canceling each other out. We don't want, we don't want that. We want them to actually do their job. So skip acids. Okay. Read your labels. Um, with retinol acids, vitamin C, which if you don't know, vitamin C is ascorbic acid. It's technically an acid. Don't use two acids together. Now I want to point this out because I get this question all, all the time. Okay. Hyaluronic acid. It's not technically an acid. <laughs> you can use a hyaluronic anytime with anything. Also niacinamide won't react with anything. Use it anytime with anything. Okay. So hyaluronic acid can be used with other acids. Hyaluronic acid is a hydrator. Don't get me started on chemical terminology because let me just tell you when I was trying to learn it, it's like, there's no rules and it's not an acid. So just trust me. Um, <laughs> just makes it really confusing. Okay. What else? So retinol, vitamin C, don't use them together. This is why we want to use retinols at night, vitamin C in the morning. I also like to use acids at night, vitamin C at the morning, um, and use this every other night versus this. Okay. So that's why this is great to do every other night. Um, and on the nights you use your retinol, you can use something like this if your skin needs it or just skip the toning essence step. That is completely fine. So I don't have any acne products in front of me, but if you use benzoyl peroxide in any of your ingredients, don't use it with a retinol. You also don't want to use it with any AHA or actually more specifically BHA. So anything with a BHA in it. So to sum up, <laughs> cause that was a lot, just don't mix acids and retinols. Okay. Um, anything strongly active like benzoyl peroxide, vitamin C, retinols, AHAs or BHAs, just don't use them together. Simple as that. Alternate nights or use one in the morning and one at night. So that's why you'll see I always use vitamin C in the morning. I always use this at night and I alternate it with my retinol. Now, if you get into where you're doing maybe one night a week where you're doing um, more of a treatment, so you guys know I love this AHA BHA peeling solution from The Ordinary. Super good, super strong. It's an amazing exfoliant. Um, or the Glow Weekly Pads. I love these as well. These are acids, okay? Both of these are acids. Um, on nights I use those, I literally cleanse. Let me back up. The night I use this, I cleanse, I use this, I top with my milk cream. That's it, okay? Don't use your retinol on the nights you use your acids. On the night I use this, this one's actually designed. It has glycerin in it, so you don't even need to top it with a moisturizer. You just cleanse and use this pad all over your face and go to bed. So this is a great exfoliant as well. well know your weekly masks or whatever you're using as treatments, know if they're exfoliating, if they're acids, and make sure you're thinking about that. You don't necessarily have to do your full regimen every single night. Um, if you're adding in those extra special nights, like your skincare Sundays, that's when I like to do them so I don't forget, then just you need to have a separate regimen just for that night and know just to kind of keep it simple, do your exfoliation or your moisture mask or whatever it is that you need to target that skincare concern that night. I will go into a separate thing about masks later, Just but know that you kind of need to adjust if, if you have um, certain ingredients in those treatments. All right, friends, I know that was a lot of information and I hope it was helpful. I am going to create some resources for you guys. So they are easy to read, summarizes everything I went over. So you can look at 
possible interactions and top skincare concerns and kind of break it down so you can build your own regimen. I hope that helps you guys. Be sure to check out the link below the video in the description box if you need that and you think it'll help you. As always, thanks for watching. I love you guys.